Hello and a very warm welcome to the Deacon Virtual Open Day 2022. My name is Bernhard Dichtel uh, and I'm the course director for the Bachelor of Biomedical Science and I will today guide you through this course information session about the Bachelor of Biomedical Science. Before I get started, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which our university is built. These are the Vada Wurrung people of the Kuli Nation on whose country our Geelong campuses are located, the Wurundjeri people of the Kuli Nation on whose country our Burwood campus is located, and finally the Peak Wurrung people of the Mar Nation on whose country our Warnum Bull campus is located. In this information session today, I will provide an overview on what biomedical science is about. I will give you information about the organization and the structure of the course, about available placement and research experiences on possible opportunities to partake in international experiences. And also I will give you an overview on the associated graduate outcomes and possible career pathways for graduates of our course. In case that you are considering to join our course as an international student, please use the web chat function uh, at the bottom right hand corner of your screen to ask any question that you may have. There will probably be a lot of those. So please don't hold back, ask us anything uh, that you would like to know. Uh, and also please consider attending uh, the additional information sessions about the application process, about fees and scholarships, uh, and also about how life is as international student at Deakin. I'm sure you would like to learn more about that. For all attendees, I would like to uh, raise your attention to the live Q&A session that will take place right after this course information session. So please hang around if you have the time. Uh, you will be able to ask uh, us anything that you would like to know about the course there. In case that you are not able to participate in that uh, Q&A session, uh, please use uh, the web chat uh, function on the virtual open day page anytime today. We will be available for you all day to answer your question. All right, so I would like to really uh, strongly uh, have you consider Deakin as the university of your choice. Uh, and there are many good reasons uh, to do so. Among those reasons is the fact that Deakin University is among the top 1% universities worldwide with regards to its teaching and research portfolio. Very importantly, and something we are extremely proud of, is that Deakin University uh, is the university number one in, uh, in Victoria with regards to student satisfaction for 11 years running. Uh, and that uh, set, this uh, includes also uh, students voting Deakin University number one for its educational experience, for its learning resources, and for the teaching quality. Um, and in part, uh, this uh, uh, incredible outcome uh, and testimony by our students is uh, based on the fact that we have uh, almost 40 years uh, of distance and online education um, uh, experience, uh, which was extremely important, particularly uh, during the past two years of COVID-19 pandemic, where we had to um, obtain and achieve and deliver a lot of our teaching and learning, of course, uh, remotely. Uh, and our students uh, strongly profited from our experience and uh, the available infrastructure that Deacon has in place. All right, so what is biomedical science about? Biomedical science is a very broad discipline, which is located right at the interface of biology and medicine. And because of this location of this discipline, uh, students that uh, learn about biomedical, uh, biomedical science will learn really uh, a range from, of knowledge from uh, fundamental biology, uh, how cells are organized in structures, how they build uh, 
tissues and organs and entire organisms uh, up to uh, the latest developments in medical research. This can include, for example, interesting and topical uh, areas like tissue engineering, uh, diagnostic techniques, uh, but of course also infectious diseases, uh, which uh, includes, for example, this dreadful COVID-19 causing virus that we've been dealing with uh, over the past two years. So um, as such, uh, our graduates will learn uh, a big deal uh, about um, the skills and the experience as required in order to understand uh, diagnosis and treatment of disease at molecular, cellular, and systems levels. This course is delivered by two of our faculties at Deakin University, so that is a bit unusual. So you can think about a faculty as a uh, department of our university. So at Deakin we have four, and it is the Faculty of Science, Engineering and Built Environment that together with the Faculty of Health delivers the course. So within the faculties, we then have schools uh, that are responsible for the courses. And it is the School of Life and Environmental Sciences, which is uh, administering and delivering the course uh, overall um, and uh, strongly supported by the School of Medicine in the Faculty of Health. Uh, so this cross-faculty uh, delivery strongly enhances the available expertise uh, across uh, the biomedical science disciplines uh, and our students are strongly profit from this uh, arrangement in that they uh, will be taught by experts in a broad range of fields uh, that they can uh, learn about. All right, so when you are joining us at Deakin, uh, you strongly profit uh, from the dedication of our teaching staff. And that is something that is really important. Uh, we really uh, love what we are doing uh, and we are very dedicated to our teaching and to our research. And importantly, this teaching is strongly informed by the research that uh, our academic staff are doing. Uh, that means the students will obtain the latest information in their respective fields. Uh, very important for us is to establish uh, a academic rapport with our students. Uh, we uh, are friendly and approachable, uh, much more so we are convinced than uh, maybe some academics at other universities in Victoria. So we are very mindful about uh, being available to talk to our students, to answer their questions and to interact with them, because this will foster uh, and generate the best possible environment uh, for student learning. And this affects, uh, I think, also on what we just saw earlier on this number one rating of student satisfaction uh, within universities uh, in Victoria. Uh, in addition to that, we do have really, truly excellent uh, infrastructure available for you uh, to uh, do this learning in. This is on the one hand, a online environment, again, that is absolutely unique and excellent, particularly for those of you who are not able to attend all uh, classes uh, on campus. Uh, if you are not able to attend on campus, you will be able to consume your classes in your own time, in your own space, and make it work with your other obligations in your daily life. Um, so uh, all classes that uh, are offered are recorded at Deacon and available for you, together with a huge range of additional learning resources, which are uh, accessible for you on our learning platform, um, D2L. In addition to that, we have very modern and really world-class labs where we do our practicals in. So practicals are associated with the majority of our units in biomedical science. <clears throat> it's gonna be very important for you to obtain such practical skills uh, in order to enhance uh, your employability. And you will be able to do so in an environment that is really, really fantastic. So we have great labs, for example, for microbiology, physiology, biochemistry, chemistry. Uh, it's really a lot of fun uh, to work with students uh, in those spaces. Now, when you are joining our course, uh, you will uh, experience a, 
uh, scaffolded core structure. Uh, this is very important and it means uh, that uh, the uh, way you walk through uh, this course basically will first generate uh, the necessary foundations for you uh, such that you will be uh, able to successfully complete uh, the more uh, advanced uh, disciplines in years two and three. Uh, and this again, very important because not all of our students have the same background. Uh, some have more, others have less chemistry, for example, the same is true for maths, physics, biology. Uh, so again, we will build with you those foundations, particularly in year one, and then uh, enable you to successfully uh, approach uh, the disciplines in year two. And while you're walking through your course, uh, you will acquire uh, increasing specialization and, and specialized skills and knowledges in fields, which are in part uh, communicated to you in those uh, units that contribute towards your so-called major sequence. All right, so here's a typical course map. Uh, and this course map uh, shows the three years of duration for the course. So if you take the course full time, you will uh, have four units in each trimester. So usually you have two trimesters in every year. Uh, there are some units that are actually taking place in trimester three, which is over the summer. Um, so we have 15 of those units that have to be taken by all students, uh, so irrespective of the major that you will choose. And then you will have, so here in orange, there are six uh, units that you take, uh, which are specific for your major that uh, you're choosing, and two additional electives that you can freely choose from any unit that is available at our university. Also highlighted here in year three is the so-called professional practice in bioscience uh, unit, uh, which includes a compulsory work placement that we will talk about a bit more later on. Right, so the majors um, that uh, are available for you are really exciting and very topical. So uh, this includes uh, uh, topics like environmental health, infection and immunity, medical biotechnology, medical genomics, molecular life sciences, and pharmaceutical science. Uh, students are sometimes not so sure which major they should choose. Uh, we strongly recommend to go to the web pages of the Bachelor of Biomedical Science and to look at all the units that are associated with this major. So each major sequence is composed of six individual units. Uh, and then when you read the titles of those units, uh, you certainly will find some that you find more interesting than others. And it's simply the best uh, way to go about it, to choose the major that you find most interesting uh, because it will uh, be uh, the most fun for you, or the most rewarding, uh, and therefore also most likely the one where you will do the best. Uh, beyond that, the major is giving you a specialization, <clears throat> but it is having a limited impact on the associated graduate outcomes. So again, you need to really be focused on what do you really want to learn about when you choose your major. This professional practice unit that we have uh, in year three is one of the highlights of our course and something that is strongly distinguishing our course at Deakin from other universities. Um, and this uh, professional practice unit includes a compulsory work placement uh, of 80 to 160 hours uh, duration. Students have to self-source uh, this placement. So they are, of course, strongly supported by our placement coordinators uh, when doing so, but it is already a first step towards securing uh, some employment in the biomedical science uh, area. Now, and these placements now provide unique opportunities for you to explore new professional environments, new disciplines, uh, learn something uh, about an area that you haven't really known anything before. It also a great opportunity for you to establish uh, to start to establish a professional network, which will be very, very critical uh, when you are uh, finally looking for a job. And uh, saying all that, it is actually not uncommon uh, that uh, our students who 
almost in almost all cases uh, outperform the expectations of their employers is not uncommon at all that they do get some job offers it can be part-time uh, and we also had uh, uh, regularly experiences where students had offers of full-time employment so of course uh, this is uh, not always the case and this is also not the intention but it's great to know that our students are doing really well there uh, and again uh, have the opportunity to actually find real jobs so for Imogen uh, and Vitek, uh, uh, this uh, was uh, again one of the highlights of their studies this unit uh, and uh, Imogen uh, was doing her placement at the Heart Center uh, and uh, this offered her an opportunity to reinforce uh, her conviction uh, that she wants to get into the health area. Uh, and Ritik uh, was actually doing a placement in, uh, in London and also in Melbourne at the University of Melbourne. So he had uh, actually did multiple uh, placements. And uh, basically that uh, made him uh, conclude uh, that he really uh, is sure that he wants to go into research with his career path. So this is a great experience and opportunity that all our students make in this course. Um, some students are, are not very sure about what research is, uh, and uh, um, it's very difficult really um, to uh, try to explain. Uh, um, and because of that, in case that you are having a little bit of uh, a um, preference for the idea that you may want to go into research strongly encourage you to take uh, one of our research project units there you can explore that and you can dip your toe into the water and see whether or not you like it uh, so these uh, research projects are uh, part of a regular unit uh, you take on a project you are implementing research relatively independently of course uh, under supervision of an academic um, and you will then uh, write a little research report and defend your findings in front of a little um, assessment panel and that's uh, a really great opportunity for you to see how research works and uh, to um, get an insight uh, into um, the research world uh, the research part of the university, which is otherwise maybe not so visible uh, to you as undergraduate student. So we had great uh, projects here, and I'd just like to highlight uh, what Tyler did. She was uh, literally catching Pokemon so uh, when she did her research project. So she was looking for viruses that infect bacteria, and that is really important because, uh, as you may know, we have, uh, of course, uh, antibiotics available to treat uh, bacterial infections, but uh, the effectiveness of these antibiotics is uh, uh, reducing uh, because of the bacteria acquiring resistance. So now to find viruses that can fight this bacteria is a great approach. And Tyler did so and did actually successfully isolate novel viruses that affect, uh, infect and destroy pathogenic bacteria. So it's just an example that as undergraduate student, you can really participate in really exciting research already. Then uh, study abroad is something uh, that is really, really close to our heart and we strongly encourage our students to consider a study abroad experience at one point of their studies. So uh, study abroad could uh, take place for one or multiple semesters during your studies where you join a university abroad really anywhere uh, in the world um, and uh, you can uh, choose that university uh, freely, you can choose uh, the city uh, where you always wanted to live in, the country that you always wanted to explore, and maybe even the language that you wanted to uh, enhance. Um, and uh, the development that students undergo in this kind of like situations is really tremendous and unique. Uh, so you make a strongly, you strongly enhance your, your personal uh, and academic development and students uh, who make that experience usually uh, considered as a life-changing experience. Um, and uh, I just like to show you here some photos of Kaylee, uh, one of our graduates who participated in an exchange um, in a uh, study abroad experience at the University of South Carolina. 
and uh, she uh, just uh, loved it so much that she wanted uh, to share her photos uh, with you here. So please consider that there's a lot of uh, financial help available via HEX uh, and uh, also our um, Deakin International um, uh, administration are able to help you with all the details to organize that. So uh, there's a lot of help available. In case that you would like to go away, but maybe not for quite that long, uh, consider a global placement uh, opportunity. So this is also uh, as part of a single unit, which is highly organized, where you don't have to go by yourself, but you will go with a group uh, of students. So you will make uh, a bunch of new friends and you will get to know uh, a different country, a different city, and maybe a completely different environment. And it doesn't really matter whether or not this is biomed specific or related. Uh, we strongly encourage our students to make such an experiment experience. Uh, this can be about sea turtles in Costa Rica or some rhinos uh, in Uganda, or it can be about healthcare somewhere in Asia. Uh, it, really, it really doesn't matter. It is really about the experience uh, that you make uh, and uh, the advancement of uh, your personal uh, and uh, academic skills on the way. Uh, saying all that, study abroad and our global placement opportunities uh, may, of course, still see some restrictions in association with uh, the pandemic that is, of course, not over yet. Uh, but we strongly hope that these restrictions will uh, continue to ease and that you will have the opportunity, opportunity to take part in such uh, an uh, experience. Enhancing the employability of our graduates is uh, one of our top priorities at Deakin University. And again, this is distinguishes, distinguishing us strongly from other universities, particularly in Victoria. We have integrated uh, career education at all uh, year levels. That means students that join our course will already in year one work on what we call career awareness and career readiness. And this will continu continue throughout the duration of your course. Uh, what that is all about is it's about you uh, recognizing the opportunities that you have, uh, what you can do with your course and what it takes uh, uh, for you to uh, find employment in a given area. And this is uh, including a lot about your ability to articulate the achievement of so-called transferable skills that includes uh, communication, um, teamwork, critical thinking, problem solving, and so on. Uh, and you will make a lot of uh, um, experiences with regards to transferable skills in your units, but you need to learn how to articulate and how to evidence it in uh, a situation of a uh, interview. And again, we will prepare you for that in our career education approaches. In addition to that, again, the professional placement is one key pillar uh, of our so-called work integrated learnings, where we immerse our students in the professional world, where students can already start to apply and consolidate the knowledge that they have gained within the course uh, and expand uh, their view on their career options. And again, start to initiate the generation of this professional network that is so important uh, in order to find employment. So it's really great uh, um, things in place here at Deakin to um, enhance your employability. With regards to the career destinations, uh, there is a broad range of destinations available that includes, uh, amongst others, of course, the opportunity to enter the medicine field via the School of Medicine. However, this uh, part is a very, very competitive and only a small fraction of our students finds access into uh, medicine. This is very important uh, the, for our students to know before they join our course. However, those students who will not successfully end, enter medicine don't have to despair because uh, as Bachelor of Biomedical Science, you have a broad range of alternative career pathways available that include, for example, a, a career path in research that can go via a PhD, uh, postdoc, and maybe becoming an academic. Um, you can also uh, frequently directly 
uh, enter uh, science and non-science industries or governmental agencies. What is important here uh, really is to understand that as a Bachelor of Biomedical Science graduate, you have acquired so-called um, STEM skills. Uh, so for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as a STEM graduate, you are somebody who can think analytically. And this is really important in all kinds of industry, can be a consultancy, can be an insurance, can be a bank, or it can be a company like Coles and Woolworths who need people that are able to think analytically. So in as Bachelor of Biomedical Science, all these career options are open for you. Uh, and uh, another uh, large group of our students uh, actually decide to uh, continue their education with postgraduate courses. This could be, for example, in allied health, could be something uh, like physiotherapy, optometry, dietetics, or our students are interested in teaching, maybe secondary school teaching. They may uh, want an additional degree in business or law to enhance uh, their overall uh, professional portfolio and become really strong uh, with regards to employability. Uh, students are strongly encouraged, uh, however, to consider honors uh, on the way. So honors is an additional year that will uh, strongly enhance your prospects to succeed in really any of those uh, career pathways. Uh, and it will set you also up uh, for a pathway in research uh, if you want to uh, aim for a PhD. So we have a number of different roles associated with uh, these career pathways that are uh, based on the requirement of these transferable skills. So these are the open roles, consultants, market researchers, sales executives. We have related roles that require a mix uh, of our transferable skills and the discipline specific skills that would be a secondary teacher, lab technician, pharmaceutical executive, or we have specialist roles that require primarily the uh, discipline specific skills would be a medical scientist, research scientist, or an academic. Here, a little bit of testimony of some of our graduates. We had Bailey, uh, who uh, was nice enough to refer to his studies at uh, Deakin uh, as the best time of his life, uh, something we love to hear. Uh, De uh, Bailey joined the Deakin uh, Medical School, and uh, Akriti uh, liked the blend of theoretical and practical components, and Akriti decided to go for a PhD in research. So in a nutshell, the Bachelor of Biomedical Science uh, provides our students with uh, the science underpinning medical applications from basic biology up to very specific disease processes. It includes a compulsory work integrated learning unit and is a possible pathway into medicine. The entry requirements uh, for this course are the ATA lowest selection rank in Burwood 80.5 and in Warren Pond 72.5. In addition to that, uh, the only other prerequisites are for school leavers VC units 3, 4 in English with a study score of at least 25 uh, and a VTech application. So uh, thank you very much for uh, joining this uh, session today. Please hang around uh, and join our live Q&A session that will start in less than one minute. Uh, and please uh, take advantage of uh, the large number of resources that we have made available for you on our virtual open day website. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, that you took the time to dial in. We would love to see you in August when we can meet in campus, uh, so we will have uh, the opportunity to meet you. I would love to meet some of you in our course very soon. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye. A warm uh, welcome to you all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, as I said, um, I'm Dr. Gillian Healy. I'm joined by uh, Dr. Bernard Dictal and Dr. Matt McKenzie. We're all academics who teach into this degree. And we are also so lucky to be joined today by Will Bennett, who is a current undergraduate student who's studying into this degree. Um, if you would love to, we'd love to answer your questions today. And if you do have a question, um, if you can please type it into the Q&A section in the question panel on this page, and we are going to do our very best to respond to all your questions during this session. 
Um, if you have any unanswered questions at the end of the session, our team of experts are going to be available on the web chat all day to assist you with any questions, including any specific international student related admissions or fees queries. Um, and at the bottom of the right hand corner of your screen, you will notice a yellow uh, chat now icon. So that's where you can click to join to um, if you'd like to be connected to our team. Uh, but for now, let's do the live thing. And uh, to kick us off, we have a really good question. Um, and that question is from Mel. Um, and Mel is asking, uh, where does this, talk, this course take you afterwards uh, if you don't want to go into medicine? Um, so that's a great question, Mel. Uh, Bernard, would you like to have a go at answering that question? Certainly, Jill. Again, thanks, Mel. Uh, this is a question uh, that is really important and that we get a lot. So it's uh, really important to realize that medicine is only one of many uh, different uh, career outcomes for our course. Um, one major uh, alternative outcome is a research pathway that you can enter, uh, for example, via honors or a PhD uh, that can then get you into a um, uh, academic career uh, direction. Uh, you can also go uh, into uh, uh, industry uh, direction where you uh, enter science and non-science uh, industries. And there are also a lot of um, pathways that you might not think of directly. Um, there's a lot of uh, data analytical thing, uh, places, things like clinical trials. Uh, biomedical science graduates are also being uh, recruited into uh, clinical trials jobs, um, or even things like secondary teaching as well, um, or primary teaching also. Uh, and another question also from Mel, I believe, um, and that is, uh, when do you choose a major for this degree? Um, Perhaps, uh, Will, you could perhaps shine some light on this, having had to do this yourself recently. Thank you for the question, Gillian. You choose your major during your enrolment of your first year. So that's something to do before you start your course. You can also transfer into majors if you don't like it after your first year as well. I haven't had to do that myself. But when it comes to picking majors, pick something that aligns with your career interests. And at the end of the day, the degree is the same, more or less. It's just you'll specialise and have more knowledge in one sector. And for me, that was medical biotechnology. Yeah. Um, any uh, any of our other panelists like to add anything into that? Yeah, I think uh, it's important to know. So every student again must uh, choose uh, a major in the first year. Uh, so the best thing really is to just look at the majors that are on offer and to look at the units that are underlying these majors, uh, and then uh, to go for. Uh, listen to your guts, you know, and uh, pick what really uh, talks to you, what you think is most interesting, uh, and then go for it. Uh, and then while you're in your first trimester, uh, you can and you will talk to your peers. And in case that you realize maybe you have chosen the wrong major, there is still the opportunity to change into an alternative major. It always takes a little bit of time to get your head around all the different offerings and what they mean. Uh, so you have uh, some flexibility in changing as, as well. Excellent. Thank you for that, Bernard. Um, and now we have uh, another question. I think this is from an, anon an anonymous questioner. Uh, and they are asking what portion of biomed students that apply for medicine are accepted? So, um, uh, <laughs> accepted into medicine, that is, um, if I can pick that up, Chilean. Uh, yes. Um, look, at that's also, it's a very important uh, um, question because uh, we know that many of our students uh, uh, join our course with the goal to enter postgraduate medicine. And we must be really, really very clear about that, that it will only be a minority of those students who uh, basically are in our course that will successfully enter uh, postgraduate medicine uh, eventually. Uh, so uh, it's really difficult uh, to put a number behind that. Uh, and uh, it is um, not something that we really want to advertise so that you think, oh, there is, I don't know, a certain percentage of students getting in and this will increase my chances. 
uh, we really would like you to follow your own career goals. Uh, if you are interested in medicine, that is fine. Uh, absolutely go for it. That's a great uh, career choice, of course. But uh, in our course, what is really important, uh, we make you also consider alternative career pathways. And we do so early on uh, in first year already. And our course is also structured such that you will be able to discover uh, the, the, the plenty uh, full alternative career pathways um, uh, such that in case that your first career goal doesn't work out, you will have many, many uh, other options. And frequently, actually, another thing that is also important to say is uh, students frequently also realize, oh, maybe medicine is actually not my number one goal. Uh, maybe I am actually more interested uh, in research uh, or uh, in uh, exploring uh, opportunities uh, in companies. Yeah, I think that's uh, true. I think one uh, key um, a strong part of our degree is that we have a really good career education all the way through, helping you to think about what you'd like to do. And I think, um, Will, you might like to speak to that about how placements have opened up your eyes to other possibilities. Yeah, definitely. I certainly started my degree with an interest in medicine and I still do have that interest. However, through my degree, it's definitely opened my eyes to potential career paths. So doing my major and my placement unit, I'm currently working in the tissue engineering lab and that's helped me find a passion for regenerative medicine and 3D bioprinting. And during my practical classes as well, I've also found an interest in microbiology and diagnostics. So I could potentially work in the healthcare sector, identifying patient samples for things such as breast cancer or pernicious anemia, or working at the other end of the spectrum and identifying causative agents of infections. Yeah, and I think the, the recent pandemic has probably uh, brought home to everyone how important those diagnostic, working in diagnostic fields is really important. Um, so I have another question here. Uh, and again, it's from an anonymous questioner. And they're asking, is it advisable to take biomedical science in order to transfer to medical imaging later on if I do not gain the required ATAR score for medical imaging? Um, so uh, Bernard, did you wanna? Oh, absolutely. Look, uh, I think uh, naturally um, biomedical science will of course be uh, uh, at the heart of your interest if you're interested in this kind of like uh, a career option like medical imaging. So uh, you will learn a lot uh, in our course, you know, uh, that will help you towards that goal. Uh, I think uh, in the end, uh, it will be something that will be, uh, you have to discuss also with uh, the, basically the institution where you want to do that course in medical imaging, what kind of prerequisite requirements they have. Uh, and uh, this will then determine uh, your choice, but biomedical science certainly uh, would align well with that kind of like a career option. All right. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, another question from Mel, um, and she is asking what sort of, oh, I shouldn't assume that it's a sheet, but a question from Mel who is asking what sort of workplaces can students go to for work placement as part of this course? Uh, for what are some examples of your industry partners? Um, Matt, perhaps you'd like to start out uh, that with that. Yeah, thanks, Jillian, and thanks, Mel. That, that's a, a great question that a lot of, I think a lot of students will be interested in. So um, uh, we offer different work placements throughout the course, um, and there's a, a really wide range of opportunities, um, and it's, it's really only limited by your imagination. So obviously we have a whole range of research going on um, at Deakin campuses that you can tap into, but we also have partners at places like CSIRO, um, uh, CSL, um, other research institutes throughout throughout Melbourne um, and also around Deakin. So there's a lot of um, great connections that we have with, with different research partners um, that, that you can tap into. Yeah, so um, CSL are the clinical serum Commonwealth Serum Laboratory. Commonwealth right? Laboratory. Yeah, yeah, that might not might not be uh, so well known to. Might be not so well known. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But CSIRO but, is pretty pretty famous. I think we're known. Pretty famous, to... in, certainly in this region and um, and in Melbourne too. Yeah. And Can I? Yeah, I would like to add to that as well a little bit to the different places uh, where students can do their placements because it's really. Um, as, as Matt correctly said, only up to their imagination. Uh, this uh, placement is self-sourced, right? So every student is responsible themselves, you know, for obtaining such a placement opportunity. They are, of course, uh, supported uh, by our placement administrators. Uh, but again, it's really up to you. So it's a great opportunity to really discover uh, a completely new um, um, area 
uh, in, uh, in, the, in the range of biomedical science that you want to explore. Uh, and we strongly encourage you actually to look outside of the immediate area that is in the immediate in your immediate interest, because uh, this way you will be able to learn something new. And it's really, really varied. There is also uh, a lot of our students are in path labs. Uh, they go and support charities. They go uh, to other universities, actually, where they do provide and support, for example, teaching uh, activities. There's a lot of uh, allied health uh, opportunities where you can support uh, um, 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 clinicians actually also with uh, uh, operating diagnostic equipment, uh, record data, uh, assist with the preparation uh, uh, and storing of medical equipment. And it's really, it's really endless. One, one important thing now, however, a lot of students, of course, also want to go to hospitals. And there, there's a limitation in that, uh, of course, you can't do uh, too many things with patients uh, for, for obvious reasons. Uh, and the placement cannot be only observational. So uh, it's really up to you to uh, basically explore opportunities uh, where you can become active and really contribute uh, to the play. Uh, workplace where you, where, that you want to explore, but again, uh, limitless uh, uh, opportunities. Yeah, um, and sometimes some overseas opportunities as well. Uh, Will perhaps, I, I know, sadly, Will didn't get to take his overseas opportunity because of COVID, uh, but perhaps, Will, you could tell us what you, you were thinking about doing had COVID not ruined that. Yeah, I was just about to comment on that. So you have the opportunity to do some placement units abroad as well. And for me, I was going to do an elective unit in Zambia, which would have saw me working in the healthcare sector over there. I was really disappointed because of COVID. I obviously couldn't do that. So I had to settle for Australia. But you definitely have that opportunity and I would employ you to take it. Yeah. But in terms of sourcing your placement as well, um, the unit team will help you with cover letters, introduction emails, and they'll help you build your CV and really help you step on take steps in the right direction to securing your placement and not just the unit team i should uh spruik other deacon things as well where we have the opportunity we have a wonderful um career um section here called deacon talent that all deacon undergraduates have access to to help them with that kind of thing uh gaining employment uh, help with CVs, interview skills, um, all of that kind of basic career stuff is available to you as a Deakin student. Um, another question here from Alex. Uh, he's asking, what double degrees can you do with biomedical science? Um, so I, we don't offer a double degree with the biomedical science degree, but you can do a double degree, say art science or science law, um, I think there's a de double degree with business. Um, and you would be able to choose, um, if you're doing a science degree, you would be able to take um, many of the subjects that are available in our biomedical science degree. So you would graduate with a double degree in Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Law, say, for example. So it wouldn't be a Bachelor of Biomedical Science, but um, you, you can choose to take many of the same units um, if you would like to, to do that. Um, did anybody else have anything to add to that question? Yeah, just uh, quickly, uh, it's 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 important really to to stress that uh, so uh, the Bachelor of Biomedical Science is a it's a full study load. Uh, so basically, it's not possible to add uh, additional majors uh, to the current study load, or uh, the 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 course map is uh, pretty highly uh, uh, prescribed. That means. Uh, you really need to complete uh, um, all the units that are uh, basically in our core and associated with the majors. And there is not uh, the opportunity uh, to add on uh, uh, additional um, majors or, or even an additional degree. This will not be possible. Yeah. Um, I have, now my next question is uh, specifically for Will, and I don't think are any of us other panelists can add anything to this? Oh, maybe we can. But uh, specifically for Will, is it possible to maintain a life while you're doing <laughs> biomedical science? <laughs> it is, but it takes it takes some effort and it's something you need to learn how to do. During my first year, uni was a real struggle trying to maintain my work life balance. However, there's a lot of support services that are available at Deakin. So course advisors, can, course advisors can help you plan out your degree and they can potentially help you reduce your workload. So this could include taking a 
you know, over the summer break, um, extending your degree if you need to. And there's also scholarships available to reward hard, hardworking students as well. So they don't have to work full-time jobs to support themselves. But you can definitely have a social life. You just need to allow yourself to do it. I think time management is some is a skill we all need yeah. to we need to work at, I guess, uh, throughout our whole lives. Um, yeah. Um, and we also, I suppose, again, uh, as spruiking other deacon services that are available to you as a student, um, we also have um, a, a, a great health care facilities. Um, we have uh, a disability resource center. So for people who might have chronic or ongoing medical issues, uh, you can get support and adjustments to help you with your studies so that you're not disadvantaged by that. Um, so again, that's uh, another thing that's available to you as a Deakin student. Um, uh, another question here, how many disciplines can you choose in first year? And does your specialization stay the same for the whole three years? Um, I, I suppose by disciplines, you're probably getting at major sequences again. Um, so perhaps, uh, Bernard, would you like to? to yes, answer? absolutely. Uh, look, uh, uh, so as we said already, so you, every student must complete one major uh, in order uh, to be able to graduate from the course. Uh, and we have a choice of uh, six different majors on both campuses. Um, and uh, in first year particularly, however, uh, students uh, will obtain uh, the required foundation and knowledge uh, in order to be able then to be ready for the discipline specific units uh, in uh, years two and three. Um, and uh, these uh, foundations are really important because uh, we want all of our students uh, to be able, of course, uh, to uh, equally participate in a course independent of their prior background. So, and this is what year one really mainly is about. So you will learn about chemistry, uh, about uh, biology, about physics, um, and uh, also about math. Uh, and then there are, depending on the major that you choose, uh, a different number of uh, electives um, or a major specific units uh, that you already have to consider in year one. Uh, again, so the course maps will be uh, slightly different for the six different uh, majors. And uh, this specialization, this major specialization will be the same uh, uh, throughout your three year uh, degree, unless again, as I uh, already mentioned uh, earlier, you have the opportunity early on to change your major in case that you find that you may have chosen not the correct one or that you would prefer to learn uh, another area. And that is not uncommon at all because once you're with us, uh, you again, uh, you see, uh, you get some insight into the units, uh, you can talk to your peers uh, and you will learn a lot of uh, things about the different majors. Uh, and then again, this may trigger your desire actually to change. The important thing is if you wanna do that, you have to talk to us, you have to talk to our course advisors uh, who will then ensure uh, that uh, all the remaining uh, uh, program that you have to complete basically will fit in well in the course map uh, for your three-year degree. Uh, but again, the most important thing is talk to us uh, and you can change early on uh, without any consequences. Thank you, Bernard. Um, did anybody else have anything to add to that? Yeah, realistically, your major only makes up a quarter of your degree as well. So it works out to be one unit per trimester. So the degree, as I said earlier, is the same more or less, but you would just have more knowledge in a particular field. So overall, I think you would do six major units and there are 24 units that you need to complete in the degree. So the rest of the units will be the same. So it's not a make or break decision. Yeah. Um, so another question here, is it possible to study neuroscience as a major, minor or a large component of this course? Um, so we don't have a neuroscience speciality at Deakin. Um, we are, our sort of specialities are aligned with the strengths that we have in the research space. So uh, genomics and bioinformatics and uh, pharmaceutical science um, and molecular uh, life sciences and biomedical biotechnology, because that's where our research strengths are and where we can give you the best experience in terms of um, having people teaching you who are at the cutting edge of the research front. 
Um, so uh, neuroscience is not one of those uh, focuses for Deakin. So um, yeah. Um, does, did Maybe just to add to that, to yeah. that, Gillian, we don't have a we don't have a neuroscience major, but we certainly teach aspects of neuroscience, neurobiology, neurodegenerative disease in in various units. So even though we we don't have a major focusing on that. You can certainly choose units um, where you where you learn the fundamentals of, of brain brain anatomy, brain function, physiology, and then relate that also to to different neurological diseases. Yeah, and also you do have a couple of elective units. These are free units that you can choose, um, and I believe there are some sort of neuroscience uh, associated units in the psychology faculty of psychology or sorry, the School of Psychology. So you could choose to do your electives in that space if you wanted to. Um, this is another question directed to Will. Um, are there many extra expenses such as the cost of textbooks for this course? No, there are not. I haven't incurred any expenses since I started at uni. Obviously you pay for your textbooks and you can also sometimes get clinical keys through the unit sites which means not every unit has a textbook associated with it. Most stuff is covered by HEX, by most I mean all, and the only out-of-pocket expenses would be pencils, pens, if you want to buy them. And in terms of equipment and laptops as well, there's also support services that can help you with that if you need to as well. Yeah, I think um, we do have, um, if you are... Um, in financial need, we do have a range of uh, support services that can help you out in that space. Um, but yeah, there, there are sometimes there are textbooks and things you need to buy. Um, but we do try to minimise those kinds of extra costs with the materials we provide through our unit sites. Yeah. Um, Many texts now we do have availability, either online text or, uh, yeah. or copies at the library that are available for students. So, exactly. so that that's, makes it much easier. Um, another question, how does the biomedical science degree compare with science in preparing a student for trying to attain a medicine degree place? Um, I would say that it is probably about the same, wouldn't you, Bernard? Like I would say that, um, yeah, the medical degree at Deakin is, um, is a postgraduate degree. And so you have to have a degree. Um, but it doesn't necessarily matter what degree you have. So science versus biomedical science wouldn't necessarily make any difference in that space, I would say. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely correct, Jill. And I think it's a, it's a frequent misconception that uh, uh, biomed would be a prerequisite uh, for our entry into post-credit medicine. So this is not the case. Uh, it will, however, of course, uh, it is uh, in, in, in the... Uh, heart of the discipline and the subject, yeah, it will, uh, biomedical science does, of course, align with uh, uh, the, the interest uh, of studying medicine because it will teach you everything uh, about uh, the cell uh, and uh, tissues and organs uh, and entire organisms, of course, and how uh, this uh, relates to health uh, and disease. So uh, this alignment is obvious. And of course, uh, uh, biomedical science is a uh, appropriate and good choice uh, to uh, basically prepare for a postgraduate uh, degree uh, in medicine, but uh, you can equally well choose a bachelor in science, a bachelor of science in um, and use a human anatomy major, for example, and then use the available electives uh, to cover um, uh, topics uh, which will be uh, relevant for medicine as well. So uh, basically both uh, pathways uh, will be uh, equally uh, suitable uh, if you um, use the Bachelor of Science uh, in, in, in that way. So the Bachelor of Science is uh, simply less uh, prescribed uh, compared to the Bachelor of Biomedical Science. Uh, so just to let you all know that we are um, nearing the end of our time. So we may only have time for a few more questions. Uh, but one of those questions will be uh, uh, here on my question list. Say I wanted to become a cardiologist. Any advice? Any advice on what my pathway would look like? Um, well, I feel this is this is sort of um, perhaps beyond the scope of our degree a little bit. But I mean, of course, to become a cardiologist, you would have to do a medical degree of some kind, and then once you've done that, then you specialise. Um, so uh, that's the sort of conversation I, I guess you would 
uh, need to talk to people in the School of Medicine about, about what that specialization pathway is like. Um, it's sort of, um, it's, it's postgraduate, um, postgraduate medicine discussion, I think. Uh, Matt or Bernard, did you have anything to I add? think I think um, you, yes, you'd be specialising in your your as a, in your postgraduate medical degree. You'll do your medical degree and then specialise in cardiology. I think going right back before that, if you if you were doing biomedical science, you would certainly um, be able to choose electives that that would, could support that that future goal. So you'd be looking at anatomy, um, physiology, cardiac physiology. So there's certainly aspects of the biomedical science course that would give you some of that foundational knowledge that you could then use um, if, you, if you're able to then hopefully get into medicine and then you'd be specializing years down the track in cardiology so so um, it, it's quite a it's quite a long pathway but certainly you could plan um, in your um, pre-med degree if you're doing it if you're doing bio, biomedical science um, to to choose electives that, that could really help you with, with some of that foundational knowledge in, in cardiology. But just to be clear, it's not it's not a pre med degree. It's not necessarily yeah. requirement for medicine. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we hope that by if you choose our biomedical degree, that we would help to broaden your horizons about your career options. Um, so this is actually our last question, and it's one that we are where it would have been asked to all address individually. Uh, what makes Deakin biomedical science the Deakin biomedical science degree unique? Um, so perhaps Will, you could start us off with that one if you'd like to. What makes it unique? Personally, I think the work integrated learning makes it very unique. And as you've heard me say numerous times, I'm currently doing a placement in the tissue engineering lab. And I was able to take the skills that I developed from my practical classes and apply them directly to a real world work setting. And the degree also has numerous career building exercises integrated throughout. As I said earlier, they helped me build my CV, my um, professional identity in my CV and they really helped set me apart so that I was able to go straight into a work setting and to do very well in it. Uh, Matt would you like to speak next? Sure I, I, I think um, that's a, a great question. Um, I think we, we have really passionate um, uh, teachers, lecturers, um, support staff um, who also are involved in research so you're able to hear about what the cutting edge um, biomedical science that's, that's going on around the world and in Melbourne, in Geelong. Um, and I think it, it really brings home, makes it interesting for, for students because they're learning about, about something that, that can really impact um, human health in the future. So I think this is a, a really um, important, unique aspect that Deacon has. Um, and uh, Bernard, would you like to... Oh, absolutely. Look, so thanks, Will and Matt. So you already, you know, I think uh, hit some of the key points also that I think makes us really unique. Uh, this is uh, work integrated learning, this uh, placement opportunities, which are, um, are unique, really, the way it is done at Deakin, and also this career education aspect that we really um, uh, subject our students, you know, to this uh, really, really important task of uh, getting their head around career awareness uh, and career readiness uh, at really, really early stages uh, and throughout their degree. And then, uh, of course, also this uh, personal rapport that uh, uh, students can uh, really establish with their uh, lecturers. So this approachability of our teaching staff is something that we know uh, is uh, uh, really unique to Deakin and uh, it is reflected simply also by the high student satisfaction uh, that uh, students express uh, I don't know, since 11 years running it is now. Uh, it's uh, it's quite amazing and it doesn't come from nowhere. So uh, this uh, I think is a good reason to join us. Yeah, um, and I my thing is I think I am really proud of the diversity of our major sequences and how they um, I think they really um, give you a broad there's broad scope to really focus in on um, sort of perhaps areas that might be a bit more narrow in other degrees. So I think the fact that we can, you can sort of focus on pharmaceutical science or, or genomics and bioinformatics, which is a really, um, that is a really key field these days in scientific research and, and medicine as well, right? Like genomic medicine um, is, is sort of the pathway of the future. So the fact that you can specialize in that um, and learn about genomics and bioinformatics and, and those kind of 
field, I think, really makes our um, degree, um, it broadens your horizons, I think, which uh, I think is something that we're very proud of. Uh, so I believe that that was our last question um, and we are out of time uh, for today, unfortunately, but thank you so much to everyone who joined us. Thank you so much uh, to all of you who asked questions. It's uh, really, we're really pleased to see so many people who are so interested uh, in our biomedical science degree. Um, if, we, if we didn't have time to answer your question or you think of something later on, uh, remember we do have that all day web chat running. Uh, so right at the bottom of your screen. So there's a team of experts ready, ready and waiting to answer any questions. Um, and don't forget that we are also gonna have a live on campus uh, open day later on in August. So you can actually come to our campuses, have a look around, look at the labs, um, maybe meet some of us in people and person and see that we have legs um, and that kind of thing. Uh, so um, we would love to see you uh, there. So thank you so much for your time today. Um, and we hope to see you at Deakin soon. Okay.